public schools to teach them that God has had no part in American history and that Christianity has always been just one of many faiths in the American culture and that the founding fathers were all deists and not Christians. Uh, some of them may have been deists, but many of them, and in fact most of them, were freedom of religion and faith and not freedom from religion and faith. Amen. And so I would say tonight that America was built on a Christian foundation. Amen. And to follow that up, the, the second thing that burdened my heart was that America's only hope is a Christian mm -hmm. future. Amen. We could argue tonight that for most of the 20th century, or at least into the mid part of the 20th century, we were governed by Christian principles. But somewhere along the way, we've allowed immorality to creep in and the church was silent. Madeline Murray O'Hare began her atheistic campaign and removed prayer from the public schools and the church was silent. Mm -hmm. Then it was the Bible mm -hmm. and the church was silent. Then it's the Ten Commandments and the church is silent. Somewhere along the way, as the church of the living God, we've got to ask ourselves, when will enough be enough? Amen. And the church mm -hmm. finally rise up from an ash heap of complacency and say, stop it. You're not going to take our country anymore. This is a Christian nation. It's founded on Christian principles. And we're going to stand up for what is right. America's only hope is back in her foundation. The principles of Bible Christianity. Amen. Now every one of us in this room tonight have the power to change this great nation. Do you not like what you see? Do you not like what's happening? What's going on? Well, all you have to do is walk into the polling booth every time there's an election. That's right. Amen. And you vote not according to political party or candidate or empty campaign promises, but rather you vote according to what this book says. That's right. Amen. And I guarantee you, folk, if we'll just vote Amen. according to what the Bible says, then our nation will get headed back in the right direction for godly, biblical principles. Amen or not? Amen. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me in a word of prayer? Our Father, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for the privilege of being in God's house tonight. Lord, we thank you for men like Kelly Shackelford, who is uh, doing such a great work, Lord, whom you've gifted, educated in the area of law, and then Father, who is stepping out to fight for Christian freedom and Christian principles here in this land of freedom. Lord, I pray for him. I pray for his his calling, His ministry, may You anoint, may You provide, and God, may You continue to use this man and other like him to stand up for truth and for freedom. And God, we thank You for this great nation. And we pray, Lord, may You grant to us revival. Lord, raise up the church once again to proclaim truth. Lord, may You rebuke the enemy. And Father, may America once again be known as a godly, Christian nation. For this we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jerry, for those words that opened this and set the fire for us. We appreciate that. Let me uh, share with you a couple of things. Number one, uh, the only business that we would have had this evening has to do with our financial report. You have a financial report of the packet that you have received. Please, uh, as you have opportunity, take a note of that. If you have any questions regarding the financial report, please see Shelly. Our um, treasurer is not among us this evening, so see Shelly if you have any questions uh, before the night is out. If not, you can call the association office regarding any question you might have for the financial report. We are just going to skim past that so we can move immediately into the time of Kelly Shop for sharing with us. We want to give him all the time that he can help. Okay. And uh, let me uh, share with you, Kent could not be with us this evening. Belinda uh, had a tough night, and about 5.30 this morning, she really began having a difficult time through the day. By 3 p.m. today, Kent's wife, Belinda, began to rest. If you're not aware, she had surgery. Uh, she had a, a tumor removed, and uh, in removal of that tumor, they also had to take a third of her lung. And so she is, she is uh, recovering from that surgery. They are expecting to tonight and tomorrow to, uh, to be kind of a turning point, but they are expecting progress with this. So please keep Belinda and Kent in your prayers. We will have special prayer for them as we conclude this time this evening. But let me introduce to you our speaker for the evening. 
Kelly Shackelford has been named one of the 25 greatest Texas lawyers in the past quarter century. He is with Liberty Institute. Uh, he is a man who has been very busy in his work. You uh, probably, many of you may already be on the Liberty Institute mailing list. If you are, you've been keeping up with the uh, good work that he's been doing. And uh, we appreciate so very much the stand that he takes, uh, the arguments that he makes before the Supreme Court of the United States and Texas and in other places as well. And we appreciate Kelly being here. Liberty Institute is located in Plano, Texas. And we just delight in giving you this time tonight, Kelly, to share with us. Well, thank you all. Uh, is this on? Is it working? Okay. Well, then you probably got to get the level up. Uh, we all can hear it. But uh, thank you. And there's a couple of things that just, uh, when the pastor was talking, uh, I'll let you know, bring it up. The pastor was talking and, and some others. Is that working? Yeah, it's on. Lights on. I'm here. Okay, is that better? Uh, and I can I can move to different places. Why don't you put it in the center? I'll do it in the center. It doesn't look as good. It sounds better, doesn't it? Um, okay, that works. Uh, a couple things. I, I'm going to pass around. A lot of y'all are on the uh, info list things, but I'll pass this around later, but it just reminded me, if you uh, are a pastor of a church, uh, or even if you're not, um, and you want the voters' guides, because we were talking about going in the voting booth and voting uh, according to Christ, um, make sure you let us know if you need some. But we're going to do a really good job this year, more than we've ever done with electronic versions, too, so you can really uh, spread those around that way. Um, but we don't tell people who to vote for. We ask really difficult, pointed questions. Politicians love essay questions, and so we don't ask essay questions. We ask, do you support or oppose this? And, uh, and they can provide ex extra explanation, but uh, you know, they're going to have to vote. They're not going to get to vote an essay answer. Well, they're they're going to have to vote yes or no. And so we asked very specific questions about very specific issues across the board, and you really will be able to get a feel for each of these candidates. And you might know, and your congregation might know about, you know, a couple of races, maybe a big, uh, uh, you know, congressional race or, or something like that. Uh, but a lot of people don't know about the lower races, uh, you know, the state representative races. Uh, a lot of these other things. And so it, it really is important to equip people. So I just, I mentioned that when this goes around, you let us know if your church isn't getting voters guys because uh, we have, uh, I think around, I don't know exactly how many, it's over a thousand churches that distribute voters guys every election. Um, and that's probably the biggest way. We reached about seven and a half million Texans in the last election cycle with voters guys. So it's a great way to empower the body of Christ so that at least can you know follow their own uh, uh, beliefs and going in the voting booth and not having to go. I don't even know who these people are. Uh, so that's a good way to do it. Let me start out. I was trying to figure out what's the best way to to do this, and I thought you know um, there's a couple of things. Uh, I just thought I, I'm going to take because I wrote down notes from what I did last year when I came out here, and I thought because I'm going to come back and, and just update on a lot of that and then try to fill in if there's anything new that I didn't even talk about or maybe didn't know was going to happen. Um, so that's, that's kind of, I guess, I, my little deal is kind of like an update from the front lines, which is what's happening. Um, but before I do that, not everybody knows, you know, who Liberty Institute is and, and doesn't know my background, so I thought I'll, I'll do that too. Um, I was, uh, when I was in, in a senior in high school, I knew I had gifts and analytical Speaking, and I thought, well, I should either be a pastor or a lawyer. And, uh, you know, people were like, well, that's kind of choosing between God and Satan, isn't it? And uh, I was like, no, no. And so, I, you know, I had a really good youth pastor, and he said, you know, if you're called to be a pastor, well, that's a wonderful calling. Uh, but I will say this, there sure are a lot of Christian pastors, and we sure could use some more Christian lawyers. And, uh, and I really felt called to, to law, but even when I was in law school, uh, I just, I, my passion was still more in ministry 